These are the lecture notes for chapter four on tissues. Um, the learning outcomes, let's see, we, you, there are four basic tissue types and um, you'll be able to list and describe them. The, um, one of the tissue types is epithelial tissue, so you'll um, be able to learn about epithelial tissue and describe um, characteristics of epithelial tissue and where you would find it, where it would be located in the body. Um, let's see, the next tissue type is connective tissues. So epithelial tissues, connective tissues, and then the other two types are muscle and nervous tissues. So looking at 4.5, the learning outcome says, explain how epithelial and connective tissues combine to form four types of tissue membranes. So we will definitely be able to learn the different membranes like serous membranes, synovial membranes, cutaneous membrane. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the different types of membranes, um, the other one, by the way, is mucous membranes, but they are formed from epithelial and connective tissues together, which are the first two tissue types. And then the last two tissue types are muscle tissue, and there are three types of muscle tissue, and nervous or neural tissue. And then we will talk about um, injuries, how injuries affect tissues, and we, how aging affects tissues. So the study of tissues is called histology. Histo means tissues, L-O-G-Y means study of. So just like cytology meant the study of cells, histology is the study of tissues. So chapter four could also be named histology. The four basic tissue types are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. And this is a diagram that explains the four tissue types and gives you a little bit more um, detail about them, <clears throat> as, as well as an image or an example um, where you can see what they maybe look like. Um, epithelial tissue forms coverings and linings, coverings and linings. So if there were a key word that I would want you to know, it would be coverings like skin, the coverings of your um, organs, your internal organs, and then linings, um, the inside of blood vessels, the inside lining of your um, digestive tract. Epithelial tissue also produces glandular secretions like um, sweat and oil. Connective tissue fills internal spaces, provides structural support, as in um, the case of um, bone, stores energy, and bone is also um, an example of a connective tissue that stores energy, um, but then uh, adipose tissue stores energy. So connective tissue is gonna be the one that has the most diversity. Muscle tissue is specialized for contraction and nervous tissue is specialized for conducting electrical impulses. Epithelial tissue overview. Um, remember that epithelial tissue forms the coverings of internal and external body surfaces. So in other words, the outside layer of the skin, the epidermis, is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue also composes most glands and then serves essential functions that we'll talk about. Um, the characteristics of epithelial tissue that the, all the different tissues have in common, all the different types of epithelial tissue has in common. For one thing, the cells are bound closely together. There's not a lot of space between the cells. <clears throat> they have a free surface called the apical surface. In other words, it's a surface that's either exposed to the atmosphere, um, the environment, like the surface of the skin, or it's a surface that's exposed to um, openings. For example, the cells that line the inside of your stomach, the apical surface would be the surface that's in contact with all the um, stomach um, gastric juices and, and um, stomach acid and all of that. So it would be in contact with the inside opening of your stomach. Um, epithelial tissue also is connected to the underlying connective tissue by a basement membrane. 
So the bottom layer or the, the bottom layer of cells in epithelial tissue, it has a basement membrane, which would be opposite to the apical surface. Epithelial tissue lacks blood vessels, so we call it, we say that it's avascular. And um, <clears throat> epithelial tissue is able to replace or regenerate cells, so it contains stem cells that continue to divide and replace the um, cells that are old and, and have been lost. Um, so epithelial tissue is located in areas where um, it's needed to cover external and internal body surfaces, skin, internal passageways like the digestive system, the urinary tr or the digestive tract, the urinary tract, respiratory airways, reproductive tracts. Um, epithelial tissue can form selective barriers that allows you know, certain materials to cross and prevents other materials from crossing. And then epithelial tissue is also found lining internal cavities and passageways. For example, the cavities around the lungs, the heart, um, these are called the um, pleural cavity and the pericardial cavities. And um, the purpose is to prevent friction <clears throat> because, you know, as the lungs expand and the heart pumps blood, um, it prevents friction due to those, um, those activities. The essential functions of epithelia are to provide physical protection, like the skin protects, you know, um, the inside of our body, control permeability, in other words, control which materials can cross and which can't, provide sensation, because we do have sensory receptors located in our epithelia, especially in our, in our skin, for example, and then to produce specialized secretions, um, for example, from glands, sweat would be an epithelial uh, glandular secretion. Gland cells are epithelial cells that produce secretions, and they are classified by whether or not they are exocrine or endocrine. In exocrine glands, like sweat glands and oil glands, the secretions are discharged onto the surface of the epithelium. In endocrine glands, the secretions are um, released into the tissue fluid and blood, and the secretions are called hormones. All right, intercellular connections allow an attachment from um, the basement membrane to underlying tissue and also um, attachments between adjacent epithelial cells because, as we said before, they're very tightly packed together. So um, <clears throat> attachment materials include CAMs or CAMs, cell adhesion molecules, proteoglycans, and the name tells you that proteoglycans contain protein and also the glycan part would be carbohydrate. So it's proteins with carbohydrates um, that um, help in binding the CAMs to each other. The types of cell junctions are called tight junctions, gap junctions, desmosomes, and hemidesmosomes. So let's look at the different ones. Um, let's start with A. This is an, the, a, a view of an epithelial cell, and you can see the apical surface is here. This is the apical surface of the cell, and then the basement membrane is here. This is actually one cell that has been cut into, so you can see the inside of it. And then this, this I'm outlining is just on one side of the adjacent cell. So what you can see is that there are tight junctions which form a very tight seal between adjacent cells so that materials can't pass. Um, so tight junctions form a tight seal. Um, desmosomes are very, they're like a spot weld. They're very strong connections, but they don't form a tight seal. They just form a very strong connection in one spot. Um, and then hemidesmosomes are found attaching the basement, um, attaching the cell to the basement membrane. And gap junctions are connections that have channels that run through, so they allow for materials to move from one cell to the next very easily. 
Okay, again, the apical surface is exposed to either an internal or external environment, but it's the exposed surface. It's not connected to any other cell or any other material. Um, it often has specialized structures, so if it's folded on the surface, um, in other words, it contains microvilli, then that is to increase the surface area. For example, in the small intestines, the cells that line this, the inside of the small intestines um, are covered with microvilli to increase the surface area so more nutrients can be absorbed into your blood um, from the intestinal wall. Sometimes the apical surface will contain cilia. In our respiratory tract, there's a lot of ciliated epithelium that helps to move mucus. Um, in the uterine tubes, uh, ciliated epithelium helps move the egg toward the uterus, and ciliated epithelium also helps move the sperm before they're able, in the male reproductive tract, before they're able to move on their own. This is a picture of two adjacent epithelial cells. You can see the nucleus in both of them. Um, and the bottom here is where the cells are connected to the basement membrane. We call the lower or the opposite surface of the apical surface, we call that the basal surface. So the basal surface is the part of the epithelial cell that's connected to the basement membrane. And you can see microvilli um, on the apical surface of the cell on the left and cilia on the apical surface of the cell on the right. <clears throat> so what does the basement membrane do? It, it forms the boundary between the epithelial tissue and the underlying connective tissue. Um, it's a non-cellular network of protein fibers. It helps provide strength um, and acts as a barrier but it's always found on the basal surface of epithelial tissue. It says it's called the basement membrane. Um, germ, germinative cells or stem cells are um, cells that continuously divide. Um, these cells are always found in the deepest levels near the basement membrane. And they're gonna replace cells that are lost from the surface, kind of like with the skin. Okay, let's look at the checkpoint questions. Five important characteristics of epithelial tissue. Um, for the characteristics, I think I believe we said that epithelial tissue has cells that are packed tightly together. Um, epithelial tissue has no blood vessels, so it's avascular. Um, the epithelial tissue, um, let's see it avascular cells packed tightly together, has a basement membrane, has an apical surface. Um, let's go back, <laughs> let me make sure. The cells bound closely together, apical surface, ba basement membrane, okay, and epithelial tissue is able to continuously regenerate cells by, by the use of stem cells. So those are the characteristics. Identify four essential functions of epithelial tissue. We said coverings and linings, um, protection, um, permeability, those are, those are some of the things, um, glandular secretions. Identify the three main types of epithelial cell junctions, and they would be tight junctions, gap junctions, and desmosomes. So the hemidesmosome is like half a desmosome, and it, um, it counts as the third type. What physiological functions are enhanced by the presence of microvilli or cilia? Microvilli is um, to help absorb more nutrients or absorb more um, substance into the cell, and cilia is for moving um, substances across the surface, across the apical surface of the cells. All right, we classify epithelial tissue based on the number of layers of cells. If there's only one layer, we say that it is simple. If there are, is more than one layer, we call it stratified. And then the shape of the cells are either squamous or flat, cuboidal, which would be like a cube or a box, and columnar is very tall cells. So you would say, for example, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, or you would say stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. Um, and so we're going to talk about um, the different cell, the different types of um, 
epithelial cells. And when we do that, we're going to look at pictures, but we'll have to do it in the next topic.